This is the Transfer Centre here on TalkSport 2, myself, Majestic. So it makes sense to start with my club first. We've been waiting and waiting for a manager. Now Nuno's in, let's speak to Spurs YouTuber Chris Cowlin. Good afternoon, Chris. Hi, oh, Majestic. How you doing? Well, a little flat after yesterday. I'm sure you're feeling the same, but I keep telling everyone, oh, yes. as Spurs fans, we can help them process this. Yes, yes, exactly. We're very used to feeling like this. and <laughs> Oh, it's a nightmare, isn't it? We just can't seem to get over that line. You know, supporting Spurs, supporting England, it is very much the same, but it's just so frustrating. And, uh, yeah, got in at early hours of this morning, having been to Wembley and... Yeah, just to see Italy lift that trophy, it's just heartbreaking, isn't it? Do you know what? You, you mentioned being at the game, I was there last night as well. And obviously, Spurs were there for like a couple of seasons and there were some great moments, especially yeah. in the Champions League. Wembley was rocking, but last night, Wembley was incredible, wasn't it? Do you know what? The, the, this summer, um, supporting England and going to the England games during the Euros has been absolutely fantastic and it's just... You know, so many people have just fallen back in love with the country, and uh, it's it's been we've had some incredible times there, as you said. You know, Europe, uh, that Real Madrid game, you know, one uh, memory sticks out, absolutely fantastic. But the atmosphere, you know, even when there was twenty odd thousand, forty thousand, sixty thousand uh, for these Wembley games, uh, you know, for England, have been absolutely unreal. It's just so gutting that we just couldn't get over that line and lift that trophy. It's got me excited, though, about football in general again and being back in the stadiums really giving me yeah. uh, a thirst to get back to the uh, the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. So let's talk about Spurs and the potential transfers. Nuno's in now. Uh, we're all behind him. I'm, I'm fully getting behind him. I feel like we're just starting again. It feels very similar to when Pochettino came in. You know, mm. and he, he had a great season at Southampton. He's come to Spurs and he was very happy to be there. With Nuno, one thing I've noticed, when he was at Wolves, I never saw him smile. He's not stopped smiling since he's got to the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, <laughs> uh, to the Tottenham Hotspur training facilities. Do you know, Majestic, it's a, it's a fantastic appointment for him personally. Yeah. And he will want to do, you know, very well at Tottenham. And, and as you say, it's got... The whole ring round it of like Pochettino coming in and uh, you know his philosophy and the way that he wants to win and the way he wants to set up. Uh, but his appointment now and next season is all about progression and it's all about putting the club back in the right direction. Because of course, you know you being a Spurs fan, I'm a Spurs fan. We all know where we were two years ago, Champions League final, and we're just about to enter this brand new competition, the Europa Conference League. It's very very different. So it's getting Tottenham back on that path again. And hopefully next season we can get back into the top four and in the following season play Champions League football because that's where ultimately we want to be to attract the best players. And we've got the, fan we've got the fantastic stadium, we've got fantastic training facilities, we've got some fantastic players as well. So it's all about getting back uh, you know, into that Champions League space and uh, you know, the, the direction of the club needs to go in the right way. Chris, how do we get back to those Champions League spaces, especially with, you know, the, the rumours and the apparent desire for Harry to leave the club? If we le if we lose our talisman and and an absolute world class player in Harry Kane, how do we recover from that? And what other interesting signings are we looking at at the moment? Well, the key signings definitely we we definitely need a right back. Uh, we need we definitely need to strengthen in defence. Two centre backs. Uh, a creative midfielder, a striker. It sounds a lot, uh, but we've had so many players leave and we've found to uh, bring players in um, of the quality that the players have left. Um, of course, Gareth Bauer's left now, Carlos Vinicius has left. You know, these are players that need to be replaced. Um, and we're in that same position again where we need a backup striker to Harry Kane. Um, you know, we need a creative midfielder. In my opinion, we haven't replaced Christian Eriksen when he left. Um, but defensively, we struggled so much last season and we do need to strengthen in defence. Um, right back and two centre backs. Uh, it's absolute key areas for me. Hugo Lloris is going into his final year of contract. Obviously, that's not, um, you know, that's not seemed as, um, uh, you know, work to be done at the moment. You know, that's fine. Um, but defensively, we do need to bring in three decent defenders. There's talk about Toby Adeverald wanting to leave as well. I'm hoping personally that he stays at the club. You know, if we go out and sign two, three, four centre backs, um, you know, world class centre backs, then Toby can obviously leave. But you can't have these players leaving uh, without having players coming in. We're linked with so many players, but apparently Fabio Paratici, that's what he does. You know, if he if he targets in one position, he goes out and targets 10, 12 players, and then he chooses one or two. Um, you know, we're linked with so many players. All of us Spurs um, fans are getting so excited about being linked with X, Y, and Z. But 
in five in under five weeks' time now, the Premier League starts against the Man- Manchester City, the champions. So it would make me feel more comfortable as a Spurs fan, knowing that we've got one or two in the bag. There is talk about um, Takahiro Tomiyasu coming in from Bologna. Um, even when I spoke to Fabrizio Romano on my YouTube channel the other day, he seemed to think that um, Tommy Arsu was going to be our first start running. He's a very decent centre-back, also can play at right-back, also can play anywhere along the line. So that would be a very good signing. He's young, hungry, um, wants to play in the Premier League, so that could be a good signing for Spurs. But it's all about investment this summer. It's a, it's a big five weeks uh, coming up. Of course, we've got our first friendly against Leighton Orient this Saturday. Um, so it's all happening, and this season is going to come round very, very fast, and it's all about getting these signings in there. Renate, uh, Renato Sanchez, who was uh, brilliant at the Euros, has been linked with Spurs as well. Uh, Arsenal keeping tabs, Liverpool in for him as well. Is Sanchez someone that we need in that, that midfield? Because it, it was a little lacklustre at times. Like, Endon Bele, I call him Endon Baller at times, because he's got so much ability. Yeah. And Lo Celso seems to be made out of glass, although he's just won the, the Copa del America with Argentina, which hopefully gives him even more confidence. Sanchez was incredible at the Euros. Do you think we could benefit by having someone like Sanchez in? And what's the likelihood of beating off the likes of Liverpool, who have got Champions League football? It's very difficult. You, you've got to be playing the, you know, the, the, the top competitions. And of course, Harry Kane said it many times. He wants to be playing, uh, you know, for big, big prizes. He wants to be competing for Premier Leagues. And he wants to be competing for Champions League. It's always going to be very difficult in attracting these top players when you're playing the Europa Conference League. Um, but going back to Undon Bele, we all know what um, quality he's got, and we just want to see a little bit more of it. And Lo Celso is just so frustrating in the fact that he just doesn't seem to be ever uh, ever completing 90 minutes in a game. Um, I just think that we need a creative midfielder to, uh, to complement Harry Kane in what he's doing because Harry Kane seems to be doing everything across the pitch. He wants to defend, he wants to come back to midfield, <laughs> he wants to score he goals, does it he wants all, to do he? everything. <laughs> yeah, he wants to do it all. But sometimes I, I feel like he, he, he feels like he needs to do it all because there's not the, the players there to do it for him. But... I'm hoping that we keep Harry Kane. I think that we will keep Harry Kane for the start of the season because I think it's just so much money uh, that Spurs are, are asking and demanding for him. I just don't see any clubs paying the amount of money that Daniel Levy wants this summer. And in terms of Son's new deal, how far along are we with uh, Son's deal at Spurs? Well, um, when I spoke to Fabrizio Romano the other day, again, he's, he seems very confident that Hoon Min Son's deal um, is virtually done and that's going to be done. He's very happy at Tottenham Hotspur. Um, but as we know, Majestic, being Spurs fans, we want to see trophies. You know, our last trophy, 2008, is too long. And when you've got these players that we're mentioning, you know, players like Hugo Lloris at the club, not won a trophy with us. You know, Harry Kane, Deli Alli, Hun Min Son, you know, all these players not winning trophies at Spurs. You know, I'm, I'm hoping that Nuno's coming in, as I said at the start, you know, the direction, the progression is absolute key. But if he could... Perhaps take um, Europa Conference League, um, you know, the Carabao Cup, the FA Cup, a little bit more seriously than, than we've done in previous seasons. Now, perhaps he can be the man to put a trophy in the cabinet for us. And it's good to see Oliver Skips back in training with the team as well. Uh, do you think he's going to be a big part of Nuno's plans? Because he had such a great season at Norwich. I think Norwich won him there again. Do you think he stays at Spurs for the season? And is, is he a key part of that midfield? Hopefully, hopefully he'll get a, a lot of games. And Nuno has used a lot of young players at Wolves. He's known for, for doing that, you know, giving youngsters a chance. And Skippy done so well at Norwich last season. You know, man of the match week in, week out. Done tremendously well. But what I would say is if, if Nuno isn't going to um, use Oliver Skip next season, then do send him out on loan. Because, um, you know, it just goes to show you, you release players on loan for a season or so, they can do tremendously well like he's done and, and, and bringing back some fantastic experience but I believe that um, Oliver Skip should probably uh, be getting game time over the likes of Moussa Zoko. you know these are players that we need to offload this season Moussa Zoko, Serge Aurier you know it's about offloading a number of players as well and bringing in money and, and reinvesting that money into new players but Oliver Skip I, I hope that he does get his chance because I remember back in the day seeing him playing for the under 23s when he was like 16, 17 and he was a cut above the rest then and you mentioned a few names there Aurier, Sissoko who's likely to be leaving Tottenham Hotspur this summer because Toby mentioned a desire to leave as well which which was a bit strange seeing you know, he signed a new deal last year and I wonder why that is is it anything to do with the manager and the appointment uh, who else do you think will be on the way out this season 
Um, it'd be interesting, Majestic. I, I, I could name you a whole list of names, but whether they go out the door I've or not... Is, I've like, got a list. I've got a list. There's a few on that list I will happily <laughs> pick up from their house, yeah, pack the bags, and take them where, where they need to go. <laughs> is, La- is Lamella on there? Oh, mate, he's, he's been on there for the last seven years. <laughs> Apart, even with the Rabonas, he's on there. Do you know, it, it's frustrating because I, I love Lamella's work rate, but he doesn't play enough. Uh, he doesn't um, He doesn't assist enough. He doesn't score enough. Um, there's so many players that do need to go out the door, and it worries me if we keep some of these players again for next season, perhaps they'll get another chance under Nuno, then it might go um, sour again and then realise that these players aren't good enough. But this rebuild has to start as soon as possible. And as I keep saying and stressing, you know, our Premier League season starts in less than five weeks' time against the champions. It's very important that we get off to a good start. Um, so I do hope that we do offload some of these players. And, uh, you know, we hope in the next few days that we do get the first announcement of our first summer signing.